Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. I thought I'd cut a second video today to spend a little more time on uh, what may be going on. Uh, we have been talking about the fact that it looks as if something is beginning to happen up across uh, the Arctic regions where the vortex has been relatively locked. And our center of attention is going to be uh, what's going on here in uh, Western Europe, what we uh, refer to as the Scandinavian Ridge. And I'm going to put this in motion, and we're going to watch this first. And you're going to see that a ridge builds there, kind of gets flattened out a little bit as we move through this week. And then as we get into next week, here you start to see it right here. Trough goes by, and then a ridge starts to fly up from Spain right on northward into the Scandinavian countries and the, up toward the Arctic regions. Now, it gets very strong here, and you can also see at the same time that a, a vortex is forming and strengthening west of Greenland, uh, and it, we start to see a little bit of colder air that comes back in. The ridge in the east is gone, so you know we're well past now Christmas Eve, of course, with the record highs. Now, the keys, there's a number of different things that we have to keep watching for. Now, this Scandinavian ridge, part of it moves up over Siberia, but then you can see the ridge reestablishes itself and pokes a finger right across the North Atlantic over toward Greenland, and it just slightly suppresses here the um, flow of colder air further south. Okay, you see how it just kind of, now it just, now it moves along, and we're starting to see more of a northwest flow out of Canada. Here's a trough that's indicated from the Great Lakes down into the southwest. I'm not really looking at this in terms of specifics um, with regards to day-to-day -day weather. I'm just more interested in the overall trend. We have a ridge here in the west, another trough approaching the west coast. But the southeast ridge appears to be gone, at least uh, at this stage of the game, and it'll just move along, and you just generally see a different look up here through the Arctic. Now, this is where we're going to watch. The models are going to vary on this from time to time, but the important thing is to continue to see a general trend in rising, rising pressures or rising heights across the um, Arctic regions and a gradual lowering of heights uh, occurring across uh, Canada and uh, the United States. So this will be a sign that we'll have colder air. But it is a different look overall. Ridge in the west, trough more in the east, no sign of the southeast ridge as we uh, now go into the first week of January. So again, this is going to be a process, and we'll have to see how it all plays out. For those of you who want wintertime weather, the encouraging thing is the fact that um, we are seeing all the models do this. So the European is doing it quite strongly, in fact. I want to look here also at the two meter temperatures because you can kind of see what happens. You can actually see, I'm going to back it up to the beginning and watch right, right up through here as the ridge builds. This is warmer air uh, that extends out from Scandinavia and then goes on up uh, north or north, uh, westward from there. And you'll watch it as the ridge builds in Europe, that warmer air just kind of, you see how it kind of punches a hole uh, into the Arctic regions. Now, we want to see that play out consistently over time. Um, we, you know, again, don't know how, how this is all going to play out in terms of the day-to-day -day specifics. I'll roll it back so you can look at it again. And you can see how the effect of that ridge building causes warm air to come in and the hope is that for the winter weather lovers that it eventually just splits the whole polar vortex. Let's take a look, by the way, at the stratosphere because this is important. And again, this is uh, one of these deals where uh, you know you're going to be looking for lag times um, and how uh, what happens up here then lags uh, uh, with regards to when we wind up seeing it. And you can see that the polar vortex kind of starts to stretch there toward the end of the period. So. How it all orient, orients itself over time um, is going to be very, very important. So a lot of things going on, nothing here written in stone. Uh, we're going to continue to watch to see how this all evolves over time, but we do have at least some uh, interesting things to look at. First, we have to see the upstairs part of the atmosphere repair itself, and then eventually it translates downstairs. Uh, we have that run for record highs that will occur 
this week and I'll punch up the local map here and you can see the temperatures we will go to the two meter temperatures here and uh, let me just back it up we'll start with um, Monday as we start getting into the 50s this is probably uh, underdone by the models we'll get into some rain and now we are into Wednesday evening with temperatures well up in the 50s to around 60. It's possible we could see record highs on Wednesday, depending on how the warm front sets up. And there you see Thursday, Christmas Eve, with temperatures, uh, it's printing a 69 here near Newark. So we, this certainly could mean that 70-degree readings are possible uh, all the way into southern New England. Look at the 60s going all the way up into southern Maine and even into upstate New York. So for those of you looking for uh, re reasons to go skiing, uh, this, is a, this is really not good for the ski areas and the ski resorts at all. They won't even be able to make snow this week. But over time, it does get a little more seasonal. We get colder Christmas Day into Christmas weekend. Still above normal, but it's a little more reasonable. Then uh, another cold front approaches, so we might warm up into that. And as we go over time, you start to see you know, glancing blows of colder air to come in, at least to take temperatures down close to normal. So, um, again, all in all, this is a process, and we'll be watching it develop. And uh, we will, of course, check out what the models do overnight. And we'll be talking about this uh, Sunday and all this coming week and all in the coming weeks. So have a good rest of your weekend.